Thanks, uh, Brendan. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, let me just continue on with the hockey theme for a moment. Both Mark and Dennis were uh, able to touch on the fact that being good Canadians, they weren't prepared to blow their own trumpets. Not only did the uh, Canadian men win the hockey at Sochi overnight, they beat the Swedes 3-0. I think that's a repeat. You won it four years ago. The women won it as well. Mark, you are in trouble. Not only did Can Canada beat the US 1-0 in the semi-final, but the Americans then got towed five zip by the Finns in the semi-final and missed out on the bronze. So you can have some questions to answer when you get home. Um, <clears throat> On to the, uh, the important infrastructure issues. Look, as Mark said, this, this is not an issue that's uh, relevant just in Canada and in, and in Australia, particularly in the, in the mature Western democracies. Uh, the challenge of how to maintain exist, existing infrastructure and build new infrastructure is front and centre in the debate. Uh, it's good that it's in the public debate. And one of uh, Infrastructure Australia's roles here in Australia is to be party to that debate. Um, we're, we're not the only voice in the debate. Importantly, powerful voices like Infrastructure Partnerships and the Business Council of Australia are also uh, key players in this discussion. Um, and again, as Mark touched on, uh, governments have been squeezed. Um, they've been squeezed by the ongoing costs of maintaining e existing infrastructure and the need to build new infrastructure on the one hand and the fiscal constraints that exist within their budgets on the other. And in particular, the challenge that the rising cost of social infrastructure, if I can call that, uh, on the public purse, uh, health, education, welfare, all important parts of, uh, of our system and our democracies, are taking an increasingly large chunk of the government spending pie. And governments have discovered that not only are they limited to some extent in the additional uh, funds they can raise through uh, upward revision of the taxation base, but they're also discovered that they are constrained about what they can do and invest in in the infrastructure space. And that, I think, has led to the growing focus that Mark touched on, on the role of PPPs in our economies and our communities. Um, it, th that transition has not been without its challenges. Um, not everyone agrees that infrastructure is best served by the private sector in many of these spaces. I, for one, believe that the role of the private sector is essential and that intelligently structured public-private partnerships can work well. Uh, and in fact, at one level, we have no alternative given the constraints on government spending. So this is a really important issue, not just here in Canada and, and Australia, but it's, uh, it's an important issue in other big economies. America, Britain and the Eurozone are all facing very similar challenges. And therefore it's important that we compare notes and I think uh, it's clear to me living in Australia that the Canadians have done a lot of really sensible thinking around this. Not only are they able to point to successful projects, but when you speak to Canadian pension funds who come to Australia, I'm always conscious of the body of expertise that exists within those entities that think through the issues around public-private partnership. I'm also pleased to see that the Australian equivalents have also devoting an increasing amount of time to the issue. And importantly, that um, the thinking at federal and state level, in my view, has uh, continued to progress. Um, if wearing my infrastructure Australia hat, I look at the quality of the submissions that the states are now increasingly putting forward to, uh, to Infrastructure Australia. It reflects the improved quality of the work that's being done at state and federal level in this space. And the states themselves take these issues much more seriously. The fact that, uh, for instance, in New South Wales, they recognise they had a long way to go. Uh, they set up Infrastructure New South Wales. Nick Greiner, who I think is in the room, was the inaugural chairman of that and did a fantastic job uh, ensuring that state governments think carefully and hard about the projects. Uh, because this is not an easy area for government. There is and has been a temptation in Western liberal democracies to uh, pursue projects that are politically rather than economically relevant. The desire to build 
bridges over puddles and roads to nowhere in marginal electorates is deeply seated in many uh, Western liberal democracies. And to try and move to a much more evidence-based approach to what projects should, uh, should be at the top of the list and why is an important transition. And I believe the states are doing here in Australia are doing a, an increasingly good job at that. Um, Canadian, uh, Canadian interest in projects here is growing, and that too is a good thing. And just as importantly for me, there's the desire to share uh, best practice between our two countries, and that is important as well. Uh, for the Canadian um, funds and, and players in this space who are interested in opportunities in Australia, a couple of things have become clear. One is the growing view that actually the private sector can do a good job running these major pieces of infrastructure and therefore uh, uh, an interest at state level on effectively raising funds for new projects in part by selling existing infrastructure. Uh, we've seen a couple of recent examples in the port space where existing infrastructure has been sold to the private sector uh, and that capital importantly recycled into new growing projects. Because there was a time in Australia where in the early days of PPPs where the focus at state level was to um, push as much of the risk onto the private sector early on uh, to take an upfront fee um, to try and get the private sector to take greenfield and patronage risk uh, and live on a utility rent. And um, there are a couple of uh, major projects here in Australia um, which effectively failed because the assumptions made going into them were overly optimistic. Um, but m And for those who uh, resist the push of PPPs, this was taken as a reason to um, make the point that PPPs don't work. Uh, my view is that the much more intelligent response to that was to learn from those failures, to build those learning into new projects and, and to move forward. And, and my view is, is that's exactly what's happened. So uh, as governments look to sell existing infrastructure and recycle capital, the role of the private sector in those new projects is front and centre. Uh, and it's really important that if we're going to see the quality of the infrastructure continue to grow and improve, that governments and the private sector work closely together. We've got a good construction industry here. Uh, we have governments, I think, that understand the role of the private sector. Uh, and therefore, we have an opportunity to work together. Um, because Australia has always uh, benefited from uh, the inflow of what I would describe as foreign capital into this country. Australia's throughout its history since European settlement in the broad as an economy has been resource rich and capital poor. We, uh, we've had terrific resources but we've only really developed them with the inflow of foreign capital. Um, for many years that capital came primarily from the United Kingdom and the biggest reservoir of foreign capital in our country today in fact is from Britain and that reflects 200 plus years of investment from Britain. Substantial investment from the United States and from Japan um, and increasingly from other Asian countries and we now of course importantly add Canada to the list of interested investors in this country. Um, and so unless Australia remains uh, an attractive destination for foreign capital um, my view is we won't see the investment in projects, whether they're purely private sector projects or, or PPPs in this country, without a role, an important role for foreign capital. Uh, that's not to underestimate the uh, importance of dom the domestic capital base. Uh, our superannuation funds are increasingly substantive investors in infrastructure in this country. Um, and without that, uh, many of these projects simply wouldn't get off the ground. But increasingly, we're seeing uh, Australian reservoirs of patient capital ally themselves to offshore capital, whether it's Canadian capital or capital from Asia or America or the UK. And that has provided some exciting new opportunities. And major port projects, the most the recent of which was the New South Wales government decision to privatise effectively on a long lease Ports Botany and Kembla and more recently a similar uh, play in uh, Brisbane has seen substantial interest from Canadian uh, pension funds in these assets and that's a, an entirely positive development.
And my fervent hope is that um, the success of those projects will embolden Canadian and Australian investors to work together. And there's a great opportunity, I think, over the next few days to share some ideas about how that may best work. Um, there is a, a sometimes um, some uh, vigorous debate, much of it sensible in this country, about the importance and the role of foreign capital. Um, uh, my uh, advice to our friends, not just from Canada, from around the world, is don't be put off by that debate. Um, we live in a Western liberal democracy and that, that debate broadly is a healthy thing. Uh, I would only be worried if I thought there was a, a pushback uh, across the board on foreign capital. There's not. Um, those of you who know our systems well in Canada know that FERB, which at one level is the federal government gatekeeper on foreign investment into Australia, um, uh, approves and supports the vast majority of opportunities put in front of it. It's very rare that FERB knock back a foreign investment in a major Australian opportunity. So uh, there is plenty more to be done here, plenty of opportunities for patient capital and therefore the role the Canadians play in what we are doing and will do in the next decade is very important. Thank you very much.